What's up, everybody? <laughs> lethal frag cause of lethal chair death. Should probably boom up this chat. Get some more room. This is a slightly historic moment. Go make me a sandwich. Make your own damn sandwich. Can you guys hear me all right? Sweet. We got sound. Can you hear me breathing or anything? I haven't used this mic before, so. All right, well, first things first. We're going to wash our hands. That's what you do every time you cook. I'm pretty ill-prepared right now, but we'll wing it. It's the first one, after all. All right. Iron Chef Rag, not quite. Uh, we're going to do something really simple today. I'm just going to cook some rice and vegetables. This is pretty much what I live off on a daily basis. 4 a.m. cooking live. All right. Well, like, thank you guys for being here. Um, honestly, I'm pretty nervous right now because I don't really, I don't know. I don't cook for people that often. Okay, so first things first when you're setting up your station is you always want to have a wet rag under your cutting board. This is number one way people cut themselves is their cutting board slip. So you just get your rag damp. Put it down. And then put cutting board on top of that. And if you have a wet rag under it, it never goes anywhere. But if it's on the counter, it's slip and slide city. My baby right there. Should probably grab a steel too. If you don't own a steel, you should buy one. It, it makes the, the life of your knives last about, oh, I don't know, twice as long, because it keeps them sharp. Hairnet, that's where all the flavor comes from. Got to get that uh, that beard spice. Okay, so we're grabbing, dear God, tell me we have more rice than that. We don't have more rice than that. All right. Rice. Three quarters cup, one cup, and measuring cup. Can you guys hear me breathing? Is that better? You think the breathing is sexy? Well, I prefer you guys can't hear me breathing, because that's kind of the purpose not to. What can I say? Cooking gets me all hot and excited. All right, so this is pretty basic stuff, but if you ever measure anything, if you're going to measure a dry ingredient, make sure you use a dry measuring cup, because one cup in a liquid measure is not going to be the same as one cup in a dry measure. So always measure with the right uh, tool, especially when you're doing something like rice, where it's really simple to cook, but the... Um, the ratios are incredibly important. Okay, so we got one cup of rice. I always rinse my rice. You don't have to rinse your rice, but um, I think rice tastes kind of woody if you don't rinse it off first. So I always wash mine, especially jasmine. Well, we're just going to set that right there to rinse out. You want to get as much water off as you can, because once again, that'll disturb the ratio. All right, what do we got in here? We got, holy mushrooms, Batman. That's what I'm talking about. Give me all the mushrooms. My daughter drew a nice little face on the mushrooms. That way we know they're mushrooms. How is the, uh, how is the voice level for everybody? Is it okay? Yeah, I thought about putting the chat in there. I'm not sure.
Creepy face is creepy. Um, we're gonna do a mix of mushrooms here. These are kind of dirty. That's okay though. I never wash my mushrooms. Like, yeah, they have dirt on them. It's really personal preference. Um, jasmine's considered uh, like medium to short grain. It's not long grain. All right, so we got a bunch of mushrooms. Dirt is essentially flavor, and I'll explain uh, not why I don't mind dirt. Dirt's not going to kill you. That almost worked. Okay, so here's a little tip. When you're cutting stuff, you always want to cut from left to right if you're right-handed. Right to left if you're left-handed. That way you put all your stuff on this side of the cutting board. When you make the knife pass, it's easier to push it to the right. Okay. Well, let's do knife handling 101. This is this is my favorite knife ever. This is my global 18-inch um, chef knife. I've had this for a really long time. You can grab the knife. You want to pinch like this right up on the base. That gives you the most control possible. We're going to quarter these. I don't like to cut mushrooms in slices or too thin because then I can't cook them the way I want to. Mushrooms are one of the few things that you can't actually, I don't think you can overcook them. Yeah, you could burn them if you left them on for long enough, but I think most people undercook the mushrooms. If you want to do something simple with mushrooms, you got to cook the shit out of them to get the flavor you want. What would happen if I cut my hand? It wouldn't be the first time. So we're just going to cut these all into quarters. I want nice, nice big chunks. And after this, we'll get the rice started and do the rest of the rest of the prep. I'm gonna do mushrooms with green curry and onions, and probably some garlic as well. Keep it nice and simple. I don't always cook the like the best, most precise, good tasting food, but it's good enough to get you by. Which really, if you're cooking for yourself, it doesn't have to be a five course meal every night. It just has to taste pretty good and keep you filled up. I can kind of see the chat from here. I might move the monitor for next time so I can read a little bit better. Where's the mayo? Yeah, I forgot we gotta cook with mayo sometime. Maybe I'll do like an aioli sometime. Uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of the time while the rice is cooking and stuff and pull you guys on what you'd like to see me cook. I mean, I pretty much know how to do everything, but I like to keep it mostly simple stuff because frankly not that many people know how to cook. I think uh, Teaching basics is more important than doing uh, fancy shit. But yeah, I could make mayo from scratch. Making mayo from scratch is actually really easy. So this would be something that's pretty simple to cook that you could actually make by yourself, even if you weren't a good cook. Um, just show you how to cook rice and mushrooms and onions. I think cooking a mushroom is uh, is an art that most people is lost on most people. Because whenever you put something in a really hot pan, you're afraid to burn it, and you can't really burn mushrooms. Mushrooms are like a sponge, so they absorb everything, and they also have an extremely high moisture content, so actually getting like a black burn on them is near impossible. Odd mushroom, get carried. So we have this big pile of mushrooms right here. This is actually going to cook down to like this many mushrooms after you put them in the pan and cook them down. is going to cook down to about this much in volume. That's it. So I always go really heavy on the mushrooms because they cook down to near nothing. Yeah, they're, they're just full of water. The fungus. Also, uh, another interesting tidbit about mushrooms, the older they get, the more flavor they have. So even if they're like almost about to mold, that's when a mushroom actually has its most flavor. Uh, you may or may not consider that flavor good, but that's when it has the most. I think we'll do like two more. I really love the taste of mushrooms, so I don't care if they're even almost moldy. I will still eat the crap out of them. All right.
right, then we got all these leftover onions from Thanksgiving that haven't been used yet. So we'll take, uh, yeah, let's go two of these. You can tell they're old because I got a bunch of roots. Actually, the easiest way I think to peel it, I'm going to just cut it in half and then peel it that way. But if you want to do it the fancy French way, you cut off the top and then you peel down towards the root with the paring knife, which I think is a glorious waste of time. I just cut mine in half and then you can just peel it from here. Hold on. Let's do this. There we go. Stick your thumb right under there. I don't even care if I really waste a layer on onions. I mean, onions are pretty damn cheap. If you want to spend extra time, you can get every last bit of it, but that's not too important to me. If we're cutting meat, though, I will do everything I can to save it. Holy crap, those are strong. Those are nuclear. This is front page right now? Awesome. Oh my god. Help me! Oh god. Making me cry already. That's when you know I have a strong onion when you go to peel it and it makes you cry. That's when you know you're in trouble. Okay, let's just give this cutting board a quick wipe because it's got dirt on it. All right. There's a couple ways you can cut your onions. Like the the French way would be to put your palm on it like this and then slide the knife in and out. It's a pretty easy way to cut yourself if you don't do it right. Basically, you want to take your hand and make it as high as possible, raise your fingers off the ground. Um, for cutting anything else, dirty fingers, um, you want to make a claw. You make a claw like this. And the purpose of making a claw like this is your knife rests on your knuckle and that way you never have anything to cut into. It's like a guard for your hands. So if you're cutting most things, you claw it and then put your put your knife where your knuckle is. So to make like perfect cubes, you can um you can do it this way and then do it this way. I mean really for most stuff you don't need to go through the step of going this way. That's like for super super precise stuff. Um I'm just gonna chop these in half and then do half Julian's So I like that on rice dishes better than better than cubes. So we got our onions and mushrooms. And this is like super simple dish. So the general rule is the less ingredients you have, the better you need to execute those ingredients to make the dish taste good. And that's never been more true for like a simple rice dish like this. But now we're going to get our rice started. And what do we need? This pot should do. That is definitely not the right lid. It's not the right lid either, but it'll do. Mass cut, reset it, hit the R button. Okay, so we let our rice drain out, so it's now it's not leaking any water or anything when you do this. That's what you want. I think rice is one of the things you have to know how to cook. Uh, pretty much required if you work in a kitchen. But honestly, rice is so freaking cheap, and it can make you can do so much with it. Yeah, one and a half, okay. So jasmine rice is one and a half times water to rice. Um, whenever you measure anything, as far as liquid goes, you have to make sure you put it down on a flat counter and then look at it. Otherwise, you're probably going to be off by about an ounce or two. 
So you always want to get level with it. Like um, from eye level, that looks like exactly one and a half cups. So I'm actually at um, almost one and two thirds. So that's one and a half exactly. All right, so we got rice sitting in water. Uh, I add a little bit of salt to my rice. You don't have to, but um, well, frankly, rice is pretty damn bland. And you can also cook rice in chicken stock or put whatever you want to in there. Um, just be wary if you put stuff that makes it sticky, like let's say you put curry in the rice or um, even soy sauce. Anything with sugar, you have to add a little bit more water because it won't absorb properly. All right, get our stove cam started. Okay, so you put it on a high burner, and you bring it to a boil, and then I'm going to put this one on preemptively. Do I even have a lighter? I don't. There we go. We're going to take it from a boil, and then put it on a super low burner, and um, cover it with a lid. And then all you have to do is wait for the water to get absorbed. Um, I mean, most of the packets of rice will give you, or bags of rice will give you pretty good um, times on it. It's usually about 20 minutes for jasmine rice. I just kind of wing mine. When I see it not steaming anymore, I know it's done. Rice is pretty hard to burn. Not saying it can't be done. All right. What else do we need? Don't need any more onions. All right, I'll sit here and talk to you guys for a minute. So what kind of stuff would you like to see me cook in the future? I would like to do a section on um, butchery. This is this is a global 18-inch chef knife. It's the one I've always always worked with in kitchens. Um, I got nothing but good things to say about global knives. They hold their edge forever. Pasta? Pasta from scratch is kind of hard. I'm not sponsored by them, but I've used their knives for, um, I have used their knives for over, over six years now. Holy crap. That's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of input. Okay, some things I want to do, like basic sauce, I'd love to do like Holland hollandaise sauce. That's a pretty precise thing, but that's a cool thing to cook. Um, I'd like to do um, some butchery stuff, like how to break down a chicken, how to um, how to butcher meat, uh, specifically like New York strips, filet mignon, stuff like that. Because um, learning how to uh, do your own meat is very, very cost effective in comparison to having a butcher cut it for you. I eat very little meat. I eat very little meat, but I do enjoy um, the butchery, butchery progress. Okay, so we got our rice is almost boiling now. It's at like a, a light boil. We want to wait for it to go to a full boil before we take it off. Oh my god, that is fast. I really don't want to use sub-only mode, but it may have to happen. That is madness. Euros from scratch, that would take uh, that would take more time than I'm willing to commit. Are we on 612p? Uh, I guess I didn't change the uh, setting, but honestly for this it doesn't matter. Alright, we got a boil going on the sides of the pan, so we're almost there, like two seconds away. You slap a lid on it, throw it on the back burner, and don't worry about it. Got about 20 minutes until that's done. Slow mode honestly does nothing. It does nothing with this many people in here. So, no, it's not. It's not ET. But um, I mean, it's just something I'm gonna do every once in a while since I cook. I cook anyways. I cook all the time. So like this is just what uh what I'm cooking for um me and chicken for the next couple of days. Yeah, I asked. I'm I'm fine to do this as long as it's not like overbearing my content. I'm definitely uh 
definitely allowed to do this. Yeah, I don't really like uh, sub only either. So we're just gonna we're just gonna go for it with uh, this section and see what happens. No, I'm not a um, not specifically a French cook. This is just a wireless. I don't even know what the the headset name is, but it's just a wireless mic. Uh, Global Global is the brand of the ice. It's Japanese ice tempered steel. Okay, well, let's go into Mushroom 101. We, we can get this cooked off. This will take about as long as the rice. Granted, you want the rice. Every time you cook rice, you want to let it sit on the counter for at least 10 minutes before you do anything with it. Um, where is my pan? There it is. Okay, for all applications in cooking, the general rule is you want a hot pan. There is uh, very few applications in the entire world where you start with a cold pan. Almost every recipe says start with a hot pan. The reason for that is if you don't have a hot pan, you're never going to get the color you want on whatever you're cooking. Okay, so we're just going to use canola oil. Probably about a tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons, which may seem like a lot, but if you put a lot of fat on mushrooms, it's good. And this is pretty much the entire fat for the entire dish, which is uh, not very much. That's like all the fat we're going to have. I do very much enjoy cooking with fat, and the best part about cooking with fat is you get that amazing sear and color on everything, but you want to be sparing where you use it. So I know the mushrooms are the most important to get cooked properly, so we're going to use it there. Do we have curry? Maybe not. That's okay. We do have curry. So I like green curry paste, I like red curry too. Not a huge fan of yellow curry, but uh, green curry is a nice balance between spice and not too spicy. Hey, butter, butter is amazing stuff, but if you're doing a super high temperature uh, burn on something, um, oil's where it's at. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you see the oil going back and forth. When it gets hot enough, it is really it almost it looks way thinner than water it's almost there what's my viewer count at right on you guys are the best i don't have a specialty dish to speak of i just kind of just kind of do whatever i want to I just enjoy cooking. I don't even really cook a bunch of fancy stuff anymore. Yeah, I can cook a five course meal if I want to, but uh, I don't want to. Okay, so here's the test. You don't want to do this with something super wet, but if you have something dry like a mushroom, you can just dip it in. And we got that nice sizzle. That's exactly what we want. Okay. So we're just going to feed the mushrooms into the pan. You want to go real gentle when you start, otherwise you splash yourself with 500 degree oil, and that's, that's no good. Okay, as soon as you get the mushrooms in the pan, the first thing you want to do is saute them. Just move them around. Um, I'll go into more detail on how to actually flip stuff in a pan at a later date, but you want to get the oil coating the mushrooms right away, because mushrooms are like sponges. If you just leave it like this, uh, only a couple mushrooms are going to uh, absorb all the oil. So you want to make sure you get them coated first. And while it doesn't look like much oil, and it's really not, as soon as uh, the water starts leaking out of the mushrooms, we're in business. So I'm going to turn the, turn the mushrooms down to like a uh, medium high. They're on full blast. Uh, just turn them down just a little bit. So it's almost full temperature, but not quite. Because if you, if you heat them up too much before they start browning, they will, they will burn. Three sixty mushroom shot ladder stall. You guys see my crack? Oh no. I never wear shoes when I cook.
Don't worry, there will be more uh, shroom flippage to come. Uh, gas versus electric. Um, electric heats up a lot quicker. Uh, gas generally holds um, its heat better. So um, I usually, I mean, I prefer gas myself. It's just what you cook with in kitchens. There's nothing, I have nothing against electric stoves, but uh, uh, I like gas. Okay, I'm going to do two things that you're never supposed to do. When you're cooking rice, you're never supposed to take off the lid or stir it. We're about to do both because I didn't set a timer. So I'll take a quick peek. Not even close. Okay. So right now getting caramelization on the mushrooms is not a big deal. I'm just trying to get the water leaking out of them so I can actually leave them on a high heat without having to worry about them. Oh, man down. So that's going to cook down to about a fourth of that by the time we're done. We're just doing something real simple. We're doing rice, uh, mushrooms, and onions. Here's how you cook. The things you aren't supposed to do, I'm going to do them. Yeah, that's right. I don't know. Rice isn't so bad. I can do Bernays sauce. In fact, I love Bernays. Um, that's a little more complicated than Hollandaise. Bernays is uh, Hollandaise with a red wine, uh, pepper, herb, um, shallot reduction. I worked in several restaurants. I worked in a barbecue place. I worked in a golf and country club for like four years. Uh, I worked for um, a pub and brewery after that. And I have two years of uh, culinary school. <laughs> right on, Program X. Well, thanks for being here. Reduction is where you add something to the pan and let it reduce. So to make a Bernays sauce, to make the base for Bernays sauce, basically you cut up shallots and then you... Um, Reduce down the red wine so you have very red shallots. You can triangulate my position due to the window view. All right, then. Okay, we got a lot of steam coming off the mushrooms. Which means we finally got the water to release. And now we're just going to leave them. What you're looking for is a really dark brown on the mushrooms. That's where all the, um, the flavor comes from. So if you're cooking something really simple like mushrooms and onions... If you don't nail the mushrooms, it's going to taste like crap. You vote for chicken because of cannibalism? I would love to show you guys how to break down a chicken. Would you recommend becoming a chef if you absolutely love food? I would highly recommend it. If you don't enjoy cooking food, you're going to have a really bad time. Yep, I know how to make creme brulee. It is green curry. Green curry. Okay, let's see if we get one of these mushrooms. Here's no, something else you're not supposed to do is put your hand in the pan. Okay, let me see if I can get a good good view of this. That color right there, that's pretty close to what you want. You can even go darker than that. It takes like a good five minutes for it to go from that to black, so you have plenty of time. But you can see, you can see even on the mushroom, it's starting to leak water, which is exactly what you want. Okay, and now that we have the wa the water leaking out of the mushrooms a little bit, what we're going to do is add salt. If you add salt to anything, it pulls out even mo more moisture. So let's give it a little little sprinkle, and then we're going to flip it. That may seem like quite a bit of salt, but after we add the onions and have the rice in there, it's really not going to be. But the salt will start pulling the moisture out of the mushrooms and allow us to get even better uh, color on them. Man down! Oh, there was a good one. Where is that one? Where is it? I lost it. That's cool. And you can kind of see the mushrooms look a little more wet now, which means they're not going to burn no matter how much heat you put on them. They're just not going to burn. No fucking rule in my kitchen. If something touches the floor, it's done.
Man down on the stove. Okay, that one could be saved. That's okay. We'll save those. Okay, now we can check the race again. Okay, we're gonna do exactly what we're not supposed to do again and uh play with the race. Cooking with soul grain, once something hits the floor, you have to throw it away and restart. That sounds about right. Dude, hoodie sleeve is a great oven mitt. That's what I, that's what I open pots with all the time. Back burner on the lowest heat possible, Fricker. Like, honestly, if you take a little bit longer to cook the rice, it's better than uh, boiling it. Do you speed run cooking? I like to cook stuff slow. I like to cook stuff slow for sure. I will upload these to YouTube, um, Corvo. We also have AMA coming up um, tomorrow. It's sub only for one hour. I will definitely um, take uh, take suggestions on what I should do. But like right now, it's just kind of winging it. I got this set up earlier today. I haven't had time to write notes or anything, so I'm just literally cooking what I cook for myself. Um, I'm just cooking what I cook myself. Um, I really don't like cooking sweets, Neos. I much, much prefer to cook, uh, savory things. I will not do this on a daily basis. Uh, my Twitch TV channel is a gaming channel. Like, uh, once a week would be about the most I'd want to do. Um, I don't want to disrespect Twitch TV and do a bunch of non-gaming content. This is stuff uh, I'm going to do anyways. Okay, now that I've touched my face and my hair a bunch, we're going to wash my hands again. And then we're going to break some garlic for the mushrooms. Okay, the mushrooms will go in a lot later. We're going to do curry and garlic. Um, where's my garlic? A lot of cooking um, or executing cooking is the order you cook things in. So we know the mushrooms take like 10 times as long as onions. So we do those last. We'll get like, oh, I don't know, three cloves of garlic? Four cloves? Let's do four cloves. Okay. Now, I'm listening to my mushrooms. They sounded like they were, like, there's a lot of water coming off them, and now they sound kind of dry. So that's when I know they're ready to flip again. And now they sound like they're bubbling again. Okay, there's a couple ways you can peel garlic. There's the hard way and the easy way. Uh, you really only want to do the hard way if you need super precise cuts of garlic, which we don't. Get all these shavings out of here. Okay, the easy way, just put your knife on top of it. Just hit it. Don't hit it like this. Only use the butt of your hand. That way you won't cut yourself. Because cutting yourself is bad. And then the peel just comes right off. No problem. Come on now. Ain't nobody got time for that. Let's do this. Okay. This is looks like somewhat old garlic. As long as you don't see any roots coming off it, it's usually fine. You can see it's got like a little bruise right, right there. And this one has kind of a, a longer root. Older garlic's not necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't really affect the flavor. You just got to be um, careful. So 
So we're just going to trim off all the crap we don't want, which is the roots and any bruises. Okay, garlic's really sticky, so um, we're just gonna we're just gonna chop it pretty rough. Always want to wash your knife after you do garlic because if you don't, it can cause your knife to stick on stuff, and then you can end up cutting yourself, which is never good. That's good enough for me. So I'm gonna go rinse off our knife and our hands. Needs more FPS. Yeah, yeah. All right. That's not. This isn't really minced garlic. It's chopped. You can see it's not really consistent or anything like that. There's some bigger chunks in there, but we're gonna cook the crap out of it. So it doesn't matter anyways. Okay, now we got nice dry mushrooms. Oh, that's a, that's a perfect example of what we want. Let's see if I can not not burn myself. That color right there is exactly what you're looking for on the edges of the mushrooms. It's like a dark dark brown, almost like reddish going towards black. That's where that's where you get all your flavor. That's where all the flavor of the mushroom comes in. That's why you leave it on the stove for so long. Because if you don't leave it on the stove for so long, I think everybody knows what an undercooked mushroom tastes like. It tastes like dirt. Let's check the rice now. It should be close to done. Let's just touch it. Sure, it's good. Okay, so now we're just going to leave the rice on the counter. Let's double check, make sure. The reason you leave it on the counter is it finishes cooking in the pot. Perfect. I got Chad as my oh shit timer now. Okay, but when you're boiling it, you turn it all the way up to 10, and then uh, when you put it on the back burner, um, it goes all the way down to low. And uh, what you look for is if you do open it, you want to see very lazy bubbles. Make cooking less of your scrub less. Kind of what I'm trying to do, but I need to like actually like write out like a plan or something like that, so I can actually show people how to cook stuff. Like this is just my first one, just kind of messing around, cooking what I would anyways, just to make sure my equipment worked and um, I could do whatever. So I'll definitely have some actual content in weeks to come as far as actually teaching how to do stuff. But um, I try to I try to explain what I'm doing the best I, best I can. Do you like backseat cooker? Well, you're more than welcome to backseat uh, cook me if you want. Hey, thanks a lot, voice in my head. I do appreciate that. All about the shrooms. Well, the shrooms are where all the flavor are. I used to absolutely hate mushrooms until I worked in a kitchen and I had somebody cook them for me. But um, let me see if we can get here. That's pretty damn close to what we want. If you look... You can see how brown the entire pan looks. It's very, lots and lots of caramelization. But they're still sizzling pretty good. I want to wait till the entire pan sounds kind of um, dryish. Are you happy? Listen to the pan. All right, put this over here. So we got our rice resting right now. Um, the next thing we need to do is get our garlic and curry. So what I'm actually going to do is mix these together. Doesn't have to be well mixed. I just want to get a, a decent ratio. 
I honestly, I love green curry. I don't think I can. I can't overuse it myself. Some people find it kind of overbearing, but not myself. So, go about half and half on the garlic. And this is what we're going to add to the mushroom pan. And then after the um, garlic is caramelized, then we'll add the onions, and it'll be done. Um, I really don't use very many recipes. I just kind of wing it. So um, that's hard for me. I can't really give you guys recipes for what I do. But I, ca I can't talk about flavor profiles and stuff like that. Um, I don't really. I don't really like to follow a recipe. Uh, I think a recipe is just a guide to get you where you want to go. Okay, so we have a really dry sounding pan now, which you guys can't hear. But I can tell most of the moisture is off the mushrooms. So now we're going to take the curry and garlic and add that in. I would not suggest picking stuff up like that unless you know what you're doing. Okay. Okay, anytime you touch garlic or curry or anything spicy, always at least rinse your fingers off with water because uh, what you'll end up doing is you'll touch something like that and then your eye will itch and then you'll touch your eye and then you'll be miserable for about two hours. So anytime you touch something spicy, which does include garlic, just take care of yourself. Okay, we're just going to wait for that to caramelize a little bit and then what we're going to do is add a small splash of water to the pan. Since uh, mushrooms are like sponges and we just cooked all the water out, we're going to add a little bit of water back in, and then that'll absorb into there with all the curry and garlic flavor that we just put in the pan. Uh, that's more so with pasta, pasta um, says you are. In fact, you're supposed to bring it from um, cold to a boil um, with... Um, with rice, but you do not want to put pasta in cold water, otherwise it just breaks down and becomes incredibly sticky. Well, curry has a lot of different ingredients. I have lots of tattoos, yes. Uh, curry has lots of ingredients in it. Um, it's mostly curry and other spices. What? Take the pot from the pot's fine. It's not actually on the edge. Here, look. It's sitting about, sitting about this far in. It's just the camera angle that's getting you. I never wear an apron when I cook at home, no. Okay, I'm going to stir this up again. When you cook curry, you can really start smelling it. It gets really fragrant when it's ready. It's mostly broken up now, which is great. And we got this nice... See, that's, that's exactly the color you want, is that really dark golden brown on your mushrooms. There we go. All right, so I can smell it. We're going to add a little bit of water. We're just adding that water to uh, kind of rehydrate the mushrooms. We're going to get all that curry and garlic flavor uh, back into the mushrooms so the whole mushroom tastes like um, what we just cooked on the outside. And once that is cooked down, we'll add our onions and we'll be done. I like all kinds of food, Scrib. I like all kinds of food. How many servings are we We'll probably get um, four or five pretty good portion um, servings out of this. Where's the meat? I really don't cook with meat very often. Got to add a little bit of that beard spice. Forget the beard net. We'll just crank it on in there. Mmm. Mmm-mm. Don't tell chicken that happens. I do that with every meal. Honestly, I cook a lot of meals without a protein in them. Um, I don't find meat to be that important for flavor. Meat's nice and all, but um, I really don't. Uh, I really don't care most of the time. Uh, 
Uh, Nima, I mean, maybe maybe once a week I'll do something cooking. I am a gaming channel. I am partnered as a gaming channel, so I can't. This will never be a cooking cooking show, but uh, I will I will throw some stuff in. Um, I have to come up with actual content that I want to do. Uh, this is just kind of winging it because I just got it just got it uh, set up today. I think once a week for a couple hours is well within my limitations. I'm 27, Borland. Uh, right now we're just cooking mushrooms, onions, and rice, which is a very basic meal. Um, that's what we have available in the fridge that I need to use, so I'm making the most out of what we have. What's up, beekeepers? <laughs> 5 out of 10 to IGN. Too hard. All right. Okay. So our mushrooms sound like they're dry again. We got all the water out. They are deliciously coated in that curry. We'll add our onions in. I like my mushrooms to have a little bit of bite. Uh, other than mushrooms, I think people very much overcook their vegetables. You don't want to overcook your vegetables. They should still have some bite into them. And if they have bite in them, that's when they still have flavor. Or like, I think the worst overcooked vegetable is probably asparagus for me, which is what I ate growing up. I hated asparagus until I worked in the kitchen, yet again, where I had it cooked properly. If you over, um, just caramelize the mushrooms in um, canola oil. Well, thank you, Nail Snail. I will still add more more stuff in at a later date, but uh, right now this is just my basic setup. Well, since we're not having any meat product in our uh, in our dish, we got to make sure that we have enough vegetables to cover the rice. So this should be just about right. I gotta have one of these mushrooms. Mmm. Have some good stuff. Does need a little bit more salt though. We're gonna go salt and pepper. Boom. And throw a little cumin in there too. I like cumin with curry. Uh, cumin's a very overpowering spice, so you gotta use just a smidgen. We're gonna use about that much for the entire pan. A little bit of pepper. It ain't pretty, but it's tasty. Yeah, the thing with mushrooms, you just have to cook them down aggressively. They don't taste so earthy and kind of weird if you cook them that much. They kind of taste like whatever you cook them in. I don't own a pepper grinder. No wonder I think that really matters. Yes, crack, fresh crack, cracked black pepper is supposed to taste better, but whatever. I could do a stew of some sort. I will definitely do um, a braised something uh, at a future date. Uh, I like to braise chicken a lot, or um, we'll figure something out. I think braising is something that anybody, even somebody who can't cook, can do pretty effectively. So that's something I definitely like to show people. Um, yeah. Nope, I'm leaving them on the same high temperature. Um, I would, if possible, I want to get a little bit of a sear on the mushroom or the uh, onions too. Um, anything in the pan now is not going to burn. Canola oil is considered vegetable oil. Let me, let me see. It'd just be vegetable oil, or salad oil would be another name for it. 
Okay, so on our onions, they're not quite there yet. Um, this is kind of what we're looking for. Not not opaque all the way through. Oh, there we go. Not opaque all the way through, but still slightly white, which most of them aren't. It's still got a little bit of little bit of zing to it. Oh god, stepping off camera. Peanut oil is very good with mushrooms. Peanut oil also has a very high burning temperature, so you can get it much hotter. Um, same with grapeseed oil. Different um, oils have different burning points. So the higher the burning point, the better uh, color you can get on most stuff. Rice could have cooked just a smidge longer. It's not crunchy or anything, but uh, could have used another minute. Even these out. So this is like a good portion size for me if I'm gaming or streaming or something. I don't want to eat a super, um, super large meal. I always get bogged down. So it's pretty much just uh, a nice portion size for a snack, so to speak. And then it's not incredibly uh, fatty or filling. So it's just energy without bogging yourself down. And there we have the finished product. And then we'll spoon it on. Also, adding that little bit of the water to the pan, I forgot to mention that, will deglaze anything that got stuck on the pan. So um, when you caramelize something, some of the brown stuff that's appearing on the mushrooms or the meat or whatever you're doing ends up uh, on the pan. So adding a little bit of water, it deglazes it and gets that flavor spread throughout the entire dish. So that's it right there. So that I mean that that's really easy to cook. I mean all you have to do is cook down the mushrooms really heavy, cook rice, um, add some stuff to the pan. I mean I think anybody can do that. I don't think there's anybody that can't do that. Um, maybe you won't nail it the first time you do it, but that's only three ingredients and a couple of spices. You don't think that's enough for 4K plus? You're probably right. So I would like to focus on stuff that. Um, Anybody can cook, um, anybody can, even if you're not a, not a good cook or you don't have that much experience, uh, focus on that stuff, because I like to cook really simple, simple good food. Um, I'm not a big fan of doing five course meals or fancy French sauces, I just like to do simple stuff that um, keeps me alive. Well, even if you do, if you do mess it up, um, you can learn something from that. That's the hardest part about cooking is um, you're going to make mistakes. So just learn something from every mistake you make. And if you start simple and only um, slow mode's fine right now. Um, there's way too many people in here to not have slow mode, and I don't want to use um, don't want to use sub only. I I can throw some soups and stuff. I used to cook uh, soups for the last restaurant I worked at. I cooked um, like two out of the six soups a week that we made. So um, Thank you, everybody, for being here today. Uh, it's gone much better than expected. I was actually expecting to lose viewers and just have people here. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'll stay here and talk to you guys for a minute since um, I should be streaming anyways. Food does bring everybody together. That's the one thing I've always I've always liked cooking for other people. So um, yeah, we're just going to keep it. We're going to keep everything simple that I do. I don't really... 
I don't really think there's that much need for people um, showing how to cook fancy stuff. There's plenty of YouTube videos, uh, YouTube videos out there how to cook fancy stuff, or people that want to be adventurous like that. I think the I think what most people need, and I don't mean this to be rude, but a lot of people don't know how to cook. Period, and they live off of fast food or microwave food. Um, if you learn how to just cook just a few things for yourself, it makes you feel so much better. Like if you know how to cook eggs and rice and uh, a couple other things, you are you're set. And the more you cook for yourself, really, the better you feel. Because, um, like, for example, I don't eat very much protein, but my body tells me when I need protein. So if I need protein, I go cook an egg or um, bacon or something. But uh, I don't eat that much protein, but my body now tells me when I do need protein. Whereas when I ate a lot of fast food and other stuff, I never really knew what I was. I was just hungry. How do you know you need protein? Because your body says... Uh, I'll get a I'll get a craving. I'll say, man, I really want to eat an egg right now, and that's why I know I haven't ate protein in a while. What do I do for work? I live stream for a living right now. Uh, the two-year live stream challenge is my goal. I'm not going to eat in front of you guys. Uh, my goal is to. I will take a mushroom though. My goal is to make gaming my living over the course of two years, and uh, that's what we're doing. Yeah, we'll do more cooking with Rag. Um, we got an AMA coming up tomorrow, so I'll poll um, poll people. That is the only time I use sub only is during that one little um, one hour period. Mmm, that was good. I slice the mushrooms in quarters. Um, I like using larger chunks of mushrooms because it cooks down better that way. If you cook them too, s or you cut them too small, they just kind of turn into a mushy mess. You will definitely upload this to YouTube at a later date. I mean, I'd microwave this to heat it back up, which is fine. As long as you cook it, cook it fresh, it tastes a lot better. <coughs> oh, excuse me. A oh, mushroom stuck in my throat. I should make a poll. That'd actually be a good thing to do. I have plenty of stuff I can actually cook. I mean, I have a lot of uh, kitchen experience. So, I mean, I can cook just about anything or show how to cook just about anything. Um, whatever you guys want to see, I can definitely make it happen. Show you cleanup? Well, I might as well start anyways. I take care of my knife, my baby. I'll get everything soaked and then do the dishes when I get off. I'm a big um, believer in cleaning as you go, especially if you're doing a big project. It really pays to even if you're just going to soak your dishes. Much less mess later. All right. Dish watching coach and keep streaming. Um, I really don't like doing dishes, but hey. Awesome. Well, we'll, we'll nail down when we want to do this every week um, tomorrow during the AMA. Uh, maybe Saturday is a good day for it. I don't know. I do believe 4,800 is my all-time peak, yes. So that's pretty cool. Um, thank you all for the great response. Pretty, pretty humbling, actually. Number one zombie weapon? I don't know if I want to get zombie blood on my gobel knife. I don't know if I want to do that. I got a cleaver, too. I'd probably do the cleaver. Uh, usually, if you work in a kitchen, you have a dishwasher that does all the dishes for you. So, um, you don't. Sure, I'll show you guys my knife roll. I can do that. Although, it's probably a mess right now. Um, where is it? It's up here.
Let me put this stuff away. It's been a while since I've opened my knife roll. I really only use um, the knife, the, the chef knife, so pardon me if my stuff's a mess. Okay. And another nice thing about putting a damp rag underneath your cutting board is a damp rag always cleans up better than a dry rag, so you have something to clean up with afterwards. Let's see, I haven't pulled out my toys in a while. Got all my miscellany stuff. Melon ballers. French knife, paring knife. Meat fork, I forgot I had that. Oh yeah, this thing. I don't even want to talk about that thing's for. That's for making these special little potatoes in a French way that are a super pain. Dear God, don't be all loose. Don't do it to me. Knife case. Uh, it's not so bad. I got a global vegetable knife. I would say this would be a really good knife for somebody that was um, amateur cook. That does just about everything as far as cutting goes. And we got cleaver. I rarely use that, but let me tell you, I really enjoy when I'm able to use it. Got a boning knife. A fillet knife. These look exactly the same, but the difference between a boning and fillet knife is the fillet knife is meant to be flexible. And just a couple other random assorted knives, and that's pretty much my knife kit. I used to have a couple more knives, but I ended up giving a couple to a friend that was going to culinary school, and then I realized I don't need any of these crazy knives to do stuff at home, which is why the knife case usually stays uh, packed up. Interrogation tools. Yeah, the Dexter bag. I know, I know. Show us where you keep your victims now. Um, maybe next time. Maybe next time. Let's see here. But thank you once again, everybody, for the awesome, uh, awesome response. It's pretty cool. Not what I was expecting. I was definitely expecting to lose viewers, not gain viewers. But uh, we'll definitely probably make this a definitely probably make this a once a once a week thing. We'll get it nailed down to when it's actually going to be um, here in the next couple days. I can't do too many because the Twitch TV is a gaming site and I have a gaming channel, nor do I want to turn this into a cooking channel, but I think uh, I think once a week would be good. And I've actually had a, I've actually had like a plan written out of stuff I wanted to do. Um, I could make it actually last a couple hours. I could actually, um, what do I, what do I, what do I buy? I got stuff for Pico de Gallo, if you guys want to see that. We are playing on hard difficulty mode. It's cool. I don't need, um, I don't really need to run ads right now. I could, but whatever. It's the first one. All right, well, let's make Pico de Gallo then. That'll actually be really quick and a nice way to finish out. Pico de Gallo is something I like to make. It's pretty damn simple. Obviously, it's delicious. So all pico de gallo is is onions, tomatoes, cilantro, lime juice, and salt, all of which we have. Um, cilantro is... I know I had cilantro. Where the hell did it go? What? I just saw it a second ago. Ah. It's hiding from me. All right. Tomatoes, cilantro. Limes. I 
I'm playing real life. It is a pretty cool game to play every once in a while. And this is going to be where I'll actually use the, the French method of breaking down the onion rather than, um, well, I guess, the lazy way. Actually, we'll do one each so you guys can see the difference. Okay, so I just want a bowl like this. Uh, pico de gallo tastes a lot better after it sits for a day because the lime juice doesn't really cook, but it uh, pulls all the moisture out of the onions and stuff. So same thing as last time, just cut them in half. I don't really care if I lose this first layer of onion. That's just me. I definitely work for some chefs that really cared about that one peel of onion. Um, I'd rather just save a little bit of time and not get my fingernails smelling like onion juice. Okay, so we said there is two ways to cut the onion. There's the French way and then the other way. Okay, so the French way involves you I'll deal with this one. Placing your palm like this with your fingers going all the way up and then sliding the knife in, not all the way through. That'll do. So you can see the little layers of separation. And then you go on the bias through this way. Then you end up with these fancy little uniform cubes of onion by doing it this way. The tricky part to it is the cut this way, the cut this way, and the cut this way all have to be the exact same to actually have a good cube of onion. So that's just a practice thing. Now the other way to cut an onion, which is the way most people do it, and the way I usually do it, is just to bypass this step altogether. Because the bypassing this step, um, <laughs> it saves you a lot of cut fingers. Uh, doing it this way, I just do it a little bit thinner on the bias like this. And since the onion already has layers going this way, it kind of, um, it works about the same. But you could, you'll be able to see the difference here in a minute. It's not much of a difference, but it's a difference. Okay. Now you see this is doing it the French way. See everything's all tiny and nice. And this is the other way. You have a lot more chunks and big pieces and kind of not so uniform where this is super fine. But since we're doing pico de gallo, I'll just mix them together and chop them up a little bit and call it good. Oh my god, those are strong. Hey, I'm crying. Just one manly tear. One manly tear, Frag. Just one. Just one. Tear rate up. I am crying right now. True story. So then we got some nice, really finely chopped onions, which is exactly what you want for Pico de Gallo. Um, let's go ahead and cut up these ends too, because why not? I'm gonna cut out, cut out the root too. This this piece right here never, never quite tastes good. Oh my God, my eyes! Help me! So you see, we just cut everything thin, all in a line this way. Then we'll just swing it sideways. This isn't obviously isn't a perfect cube, but it's still using all of the onion, which is well better than throwing it away. Oh my god, I can't see. Oh stop. Stop it onion. Oh Onion used tear gas, it is super effective. 
Well, they say never trust a skinny chef. I am not uh, technically overweight. I was a lot heavier when I worked in kitchens because I'd always eat fried food and, well, whatever was on, whatever was on hand. I'm much skinnier now than I used to be. Okay, now we have these Roma tomatoes. Let's see. Let's throw a couple in here to get a decent idea of how many... Uh, how many I'm going to want in there? Um, three might do it. Frag has legs? Get out of here. Oh my god, my eyes. It's going to give us a quick rinse. Never be too careful. Okay, this is how I like to do my tomatoes. Everybody has their own little way of doing it. Here's a tip, if you don't have the sharpest knife in the world, this knife is pretty sharp. Um, what you do is when you cut it, you put the the corner in. Oh yeah, that's not right. You put the corner in on the bottom, and that'll start your cut. If you don't have the sharpest knife in the world, it'll make it a lot easier to cut through if you just use the corner to, to start. Okay, so this is all stuff we're not really going to use. And then... That's how I like to dice my onions. It's not probably not the quickest way. I just find it to be the most effective. Put all the end pieces out for later. We have nice little sections. Uh, as a general rule of thumb, if you want to go like improve your speed a little bit, um, what you do is you want to do everything at once. So if I'm going to peel and cut five onions at once, you do it one step at a time. So I'm going to get all my little stacks set up, and then we'll go from there. That's two stacks. And three stacks. Oh, there's the troll cat. Uh, you want to you be on camera? This is the animal that never, ever, ever shows up on camera because all she does is howl. <coughs> Isn't that right? That's all you that's all you do with your life. That's it. That's all she does. That's all she does. Alright. All right. Get out of here. Alright, I gotta blow my nose and then wash my hands because we just touched a cat. I honestly don't think germs are a terrible thing. I'm by no means a germaphobe. And the reason for that being is I don't think... you got to have an immune system, right? But, okay, let's say I don't wash my hands after I touch my hair here. I'm not cooking for anybody else but myself. I'm going to eat this, so... The only person I can make sick is myself, which I think is fair. So we cut it into kind of strips. These are very juicy tomatoes, so it's very hard to get a dice on them. We are kind of we are kind of cutting them into strips. Like it's kind of what we're going for. Uh, Trick to be good, a guy is having the right onion to tomato ratio. Uh, it's usually only bad if you have too many onions to your tomatoes, but not always the case. Having a nice ripe tomato is a good thing too, because all this tomato juice um, is really where a lot of the flavor comes. Okay. We'll put this in there. I realize that's probably not enough tomatoes, but we'll see after we get the uh, the bottoms done. See, my knife didn't go all the way through, so I'll have some chunks in there. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, I could I could lay out all my ingredients and have everything set up already, but I feel like the Food Network and a lot of cooking shows, they feel really fake. Like, it takes a lot of time to cook the stuff they cook. I don't know, that looks like a pretty good tomato to bung in. You don't want it to be quite half and half, but pretty close. Maybe one more tomato. Hmm. Maybe if there's a small tomato in there. Where's the smallest one? I think one more is gonna do it. See, I like I like mine to be heavy on onion, but not too heavy. So if it's too heavy, it's just not good. You can also use these little um, well, tomato butts to add in there. Uh, there's another another tip here, especially um, if you're cutting tomatoes or peppers the same way. If you have the option to cut from one side, always cut from the the inside. It makes your knife go through a lot easier. Like trying to cut a tomato from the outside with a dull knife is an absolute nightmare. Same goes with peppers. Once you get them in half, you cut from the uh, the flesh side. It uh, becomes a lot easier. Okay. Yeah, that looks a lot better. That's definitely a good ratio to tomatoes to onion. Much better. Okay, next step, get our cutting board cleaned off. Alright, so I'll do our lime next. If you want to get good juice out of a lime, limes are inherently pretty hard. Uh, a good way to do it is roll them on the cutting board first, and that will release a lot of the juice that you want to get out anyways. So now it's a lot it's a lot easier, more pliable, got the, got the juice out of it, so we can actually get a good, good amount. No jalapeno in my pico. Um, some people put jalapeno in. I'm not a huge fan of jalapenos and pico. I love jalapenos, but not uh, not there. There's a kitchen rag, just a kitchen rag. And we're also going to add our salt now. Salt serves two purposes. It makes it delicious, and it also pulls out the moisture that you're going to want in your um, in your dish. It's honestly pretty hard to oversalt pico de gallo, but you can do it. Okay, now that we rolled our lime in, Cut it in half. That Walmart salt. All right. I honestly don't mind if you get, I get some of the rinds and stuff in there. I mean, yeah, you can do it through a strainer, but I don't feel that's terribly important. Okay. Now, this is when we want to taste to make sure we don't go over lime. If you go over lime, you're going to have a problem. So I squeezed about one half and then a little bit more in there. Now the pico de gallo is going to taste way different after it sits in the fridge for a day because all that lime juice is going to absorb into everything. But, uh, taste it now. I was pretty damn close. Another squeeze of lime. You want it to be acidy, but not get, give you a tang on your tongue. I mean, this is a, this is a four-ingredient um, dish that's so really good. I mean, if you like chips and salsa, or even if you make beans or something, it's really uh, quite effective for adding a ton of flavor, and it's um, fat-free and delicious. Okay, so that's definitely enough, and then all we need to add left is cilantro. Uh, anytime you use herbs, it's something that you must wash. You never, even if it looks clean, always rinse your herbs. Um, herbs are inherently pretty damn dirty. Okay. 
That should be that should be a good amount after it's chopped up. I like cilantro a lot. Some people think it's overpowering. I I absolutely love it. All right, so I wash it off real good. Squeeze all the water out of it. Okay, let me make sure we don't got some dirty leaves in here. All right, all we gotta do is chop it. Um, some people pick the cilantro off the stem. I think the stem has the most flavor in the cilantro, so I never do that. Okay. You don't want too rough of a chop. Like, even pieces like that, I think, are are okay in the, in the pico. doesn't have to be super fine or anything like that. The only thing you really want fine in the pico de gallo is the onions. That's the most important part. We'll just mix it up. And of course, we just washed our hands, so we're not too worried about doing this. And... There you have it. Pico de Gallo. So that's definitely something that's super easy that I think just about anybody can cook. Get carried, Frank. Get carried. All right. We'll clean off our cutting board and then put everything away. We should be good. I'll have to sweep up when I'm done. I'm not the <laughs> cleanliest cook in the world, but I do try. It's something I've always worked on in kitchens. I worked for a chef that was really, really intense about everything be being clean before I stabbed myself in the foot. My baby. My baby fell on the ground. Don't do that. My toe! Oh my god! My toe! Nobody died. We're fine. Yeah, I always have my juke shoes on. When you work in a kitchen, especially on a line, that's like a, at least bi-nightly experience, uh, a knife getting thrown on the ground or knocked off the counter or something like that. You always got to be on your toes. Alright, so that's pico de gallo, and then we'll let that sit overnight, and it'll be even more delicious than it is right now. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, I've seen somebody cut their finger off on a slicer before. It's pretty gnarly. Cleaning is part of cooking, and I have to do dishes once I get out of here. Is Subway healthy? It depends. It, I guess it depends on what you order. Is there a towel on the floor? There is a towel on the floor. Did you look at that? Well, that one will go in the laundry. You just keep a damp rag around and then reuse it the next day. I always have one for under the cutting board. All right. Uh, it's pico de gallo, so it's like a it's like a salsa. It's a fresh salsa. You can put it on chips. You can put it on beans. You can put it on rice. It's good. It is a global 18 inch chef knife when I just dropped the ground. That was that was scary. I don't like dropping my knives. The kitchen's always clean because I don't. Um, I don't like a messy kitchen. I never have. Jesus, you guys are backseat cooking. Get out of here. Well, all right, guys. I think that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for joining me today. It was very fun. Very fun. Well, nobody likes dropping their knives, but that knife, that knife is an amazing place in my heart.
Uh, videos are automatically recorded by Twitch TV, so we'll make a highlight out of it or something. Yeah, we're going to raid somebody. Let's find somebody to raid. Who gets raided today? Who's the raided? Do, 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 do. Now I got that Nom Nom song from uh, freaking Boshi stuck in my head. Well, let's raid Mr. Tornis. He is on the same place I was when I stopped casting um, the Boshi. So thank you everybody for the wonderful time today. We're going to raid Mr. Tornis. Uh, yeah, 4.5k raid. He is doing Mega Man, and I want to be the Bashi. So thank you so much, everybody. Um, I had a great time today. We'll do. Uh, we'll nail some more stuff down in AMA. But uh, honestly, just thank you guys. I love you. I love you. We'll be back. Uh, back at it tomorrow. That's all I got. Rag out. <laughs>